And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work. For you, it is a day of blowing the trumpets. You shall offer a burnt offering as a sweet aroma to the Lord, one young bull, one ram, and seven lambs in their first year, without blemish. Their grain offering shall be fine flour mixed with oil, three-tenths of an ephah for the bull, two-tenths for the ram, and one-tenth for each of the seven lambs. Also one kid of the goats as a sin offering to make atonement for you, besides the burnt offering with its grain offering for the new moon, the regular burnt offering with its grain offering, and their drink offerings according to their ordinance as a sweet aroma, an offering made by fire to the Lord. On the tenth day of this seventh month, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall afflict your souls. You shall not do any work. You shall present a burnt offering to the Lord as a sweet aroma, one young bull, one ram, and seven lambs in their first year. Be sure they are without blemish. Their grain offering shall be of fine flour mixed with oil, three-tenths of an ephah for the bull, two-tenths for the one ram, and one-tenth for each of the seven lambs. Also one kid of the goats as a sin offering, besides the sin offering for atonement, the regular burnt offering with its grain offering, and their drink offerings. On the fifteenth day of the seventh month, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work, and you shall keep a feast to the Lord seven days. You shall present a burnt offering, an offering made by fire as a sweet aroma to the Lord, thirteen young bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs in their first year. They shall be without blemish. Their grain offering shall be of fine flour mixed with oil, three-tenths of an ephah for each of the thirteen bulls, two-tenths for each of the two rams, and one-tenth for each of the fourteen lambs. Also, one kid of the goats as a sin offering, besides the regular burnt offering, its grain offering, and its drink offering. On the second day, present twelve young bulls, two rams, fourteen lambs in their first year without blemish, and their grain offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs by their number according to the ordinance. Also one kid of the goats as a sin offering, besides the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and their drink offerings. On the third day, present eleven bulls, two rams, fourteen lambs in their first year without blemish, and their grain offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs by their number according to the ordinance. Also one goat as a sin offering, besides the regular burnt offering, its grain offering, and its drink offering. On the fourth day, present ten bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs in their first year without blemish, and their grain offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs, by their number, according to the ordinance. Also one kid of the goats as a sin offering, besides the regular burnt offering, its grain offering, and its drink offering. On the fifth day, present nine bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs in their first year without blemish, and their grain offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs by their number, according to the ordinance. Also one goat as a sin offering, besides the regular burnt offering, its grain offering, and its drink offering. On the sixth day, present eight bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs in their first year without blemish, and their grain offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs by their number, according to the ordinance. Also one goat as a sin offering, besides the regular burnt offering, its grain offering, and its drink offering. 
On the seventh day, present seven bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs in their first year without blemish, and their grain offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs by their number, according to the ordinance. Also one goat as a sin offering, besides the regular burnt offering, its grain offering and its drink offering. On the eighth day, you shall have a sacred assembly. You shall do no customary work. You shall present a burnt offering, an offering made by fire as a sweet aroma to the Lord. One bull, one ram, seven lambs in their first year without blemish, and their grain offering and their drink offerings for the bull, for the ram, and for the lambs by their number according to the ordinance. Also one goat as a sin offering besides the regular burnt offering, its grain offering, and its drink offering. These you shall present to the Lord at your appointed feasts, besides your vowed offerings and your free will offerings, as your burnt offerings and your grain offerings, as your drink offerings and your peace offerings. So Moses told the children of Israel everything, just as the Lord commanded Moses. Then Moses spoke to the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel. This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. If a man makes a vow to the Lord, or swears an oath to bind himself by some agreement, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. Or if a woman makes a vow to the Lord and binds herself by some agreement while in her father's house in her youth, and her father hears her vow and the agreement by which she has bound herself, and her father holds his peace, then all her vows shall stand, and every agreement with which she has bound herself shall stand. But if her father overrules her on the day that he hears, then none of her vows nor her agreements by which she has bound herself shall stand. And the Lord will release her because her father overruled her. If indeed she takes a husband while bound by her vows or by a rash utterance from her lips by which she bound herself, and her husband hears it and makes no response to her on the day that he hears, then her vows shall stand, and her agreements by which she bound herself shall stand. But if her husband overrules her on the day that he hears it, he shall make void her vow which she took, and what she uttered with her lips, by which she bound herself, and the Lord will release her. Also, any vow of a widow or a divorced woman, by which she has bound herself, shall stand against her. If she vowed in her husband's house, or bound herself by an agreement with an oath, and her husband heard it and made no response to her, and did not overrule her, then all her vows shall stand, and every agreement by which she bound herself shall stand. But if her husband truly made them void on the day he heard them, then whatever proceeded from her lips concerning her vows or concerning the agreement binding her, it shall not stand. Her husband has made them void, and the Lord will release her. Every vow and every binding oath to afflict her soul 
Her husband may confirm it, or her husband may make it void. Now, if her husband makes no response whatever to her from day to day, then he confirms all her vows or all the agreements that bind her. He confirms them because he made no response to her on the day that he heard them. But if he does make them void after he has heard them, then he shall bear her guilt. These are the statutes which the Lord commanded Moses between a man and his wife, and between a father and his daughter in her youth, in her father's house. And the Lord spoke to Moses. Take vengeance on the Midianites for the children of Israel. Afterward, you shall be gathered to your people. So Moses spoke to the people. Arm some of yourselves for war, and let them go against the Midianites to take vengeance for the Lord on Midian. A thousand from each tribe of all the tribes of Israel, you shall send to the war. So there were recruited from the divisions of Israel, 1,000 from each tribe, 12,000 armed for war. Then Moses sent them to the war, 1,000 from each tribe. He sent them to the war with Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, with the holy articles and the signal trumpets in his hand. They warred against the Midianites, just as the Lord commanded Moses, and they killed all the males. They killed all the kings of Midian, with the rest of those who were killed, Evi, Rechem, Zer, Hur, and Reba, the five kings of Midian. Balaam, the son of Beor, they also killed with a sword. And the children of Israel took the women of Midian captive, with their little ones, and took as spoil all their cattle, all their flocks, and all their goods. They also burned with fire all the cities where they dwelt, and all their forts, and they took all the spoil and all the booty of man and beast. Then they brought the captives, the booty, and the spoil to Moses, Eleazar the priest, and to the congregation of the children of Israel, to the camp in the plains of Moab by the Jordan, across from Jericho. And Moses, Eleazar the priest, and all the leaders of the congregation went to meet them outside the camp. But Moses was angry with the officers of the army, with the captains over thousands and captains over hundreds who had come from the battle. And Moses said to them, Have you kept all the women alive? Look, these women caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to trespass against the Lord in the incident of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. Now, therefore, kill every male among the little ones and kill every woman who has known a man intimately. But keep alive for yourselves all the young girls who have not known a man intimately. And as for you, remain outside the camp seven days. Whoever has killed any person and whoever has touched any slain Purify yourselves and your captives on the third day and on the seventh day. Purify every garment, everything made of leather, everything woven of goat's hair, and everything made of wood. Then Eliezer the priest said to the men of war who had gone to the battle, this is the ordinance of the law which the Lord commanded Moses. Only the gold, the silver, 
the bronze, the iron, the tin, and the lead, everything that can endure fire, you shall put through the fire, and it shall be clean, and it shall be purified with the water of purification. But all that cannot endure fire, you shall put through water, and you shall wash your clothes on the seventh day and be clean, and afterward you may come into the camp. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, Count up the plunder that was taken of man and beast, you and Eleazar the priest, and the chief fathers of the congregation, and divide the plunder into two parts, between those who took part in the war, who went out to battle, and all the congregation. And levy a tribute for the Lord on the men of war who went out to battle one of every five hundred of the persons, the cattle, the donkeys, and the sheep. Take it from their half and give it to Eleazar the priest as a heave offering to the Lord. And from the children of Israel's half, you shall take one of every fifty drawn from the persons, the cattle, the donkeys, and the sheep from all the livestock and give them to the Levites who keep charge of the tabernacle of the Lord. So Moses and Eleazar the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. The booty remaining from the plunder which the men of war had taken was 675,000 sheep, 72,000 cattle, 61,000 donkeys, and 32,000 persons in all, of women who had not known a man intimately. And the half, the portion for those who had gone out to war was in number 337,500 sheep. And the Lord's tribute of the sheep was 675. The cattle were 36,000, of which the Lord's tribute was 72. The donkeys were 30,500, of which the Lord's tribute was 61. The persons were 16,000 of which the Lord's tribute was thirty-two persons. So Moses gave the tribute, which was the Lord's heave offering, to Eleazar the priest, as the Lord commanded Moses. And from the children of Israel's half, which Moses separated from the men who fought, now the half belonging to the congregation was 337,500 sheep, 36,000 cattle, 30,500 donkeys, and 16,000 persons. And from the children of Israel's half, Moses took one of every fifty, drawn from man and beast, and gave them to the Levites, who kept charge of the tabernacle of the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. Then the officers, who were over thousands of the army, the captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, came near to Moses, and they said to Moses, Your servants have taken account of the men of war who are under our command, and not a man of us is missing. Therefore, we have brought an offering for the Lord, what every man found of ornaments of gold, armlets and bracelets and signet rings and earrings and necklaces, to make atonement for ourselves before the Lord. So Moses and Eleazar the priest received the gold from them, all the fashioned ornaments, and all the gold of the offering that they offered to the Lord from the captains of thousands and captains of hundreds was 16,750 shekels. The men of war had taken spoil every man for himself. And Moses and Eleazar the priest received the gold from the captains of thousands and of hundreds and brought it into the tabernacle of meeting as a memorial for the children of Israel before the Lord. Now the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of livestock. And when they saw the land of Jazer and the land of Gilead, that indeed the region was a place for livestock, the children of Gad and the children of Reuben came and spoke to Moses, to Eleazar the priest, and to the leaders of the congregation. Ataroth, Dibon, Jazer, Nimrah, Heshbon, Elaela, Shebam, Nebo, and Beon. 
the country which the Lord defeated before the congregation of Israel is a land for livestock, and your servants have livestock. Therefore they said, If we have found favor in your sight, let this land be given to your servants as a possession. Do not take us over the Jordan. And Moses said to the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben, Shall your brethren go to war while you sit here? Now, why will you discourage the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord has given them? Thus your fathers did when I sent them away from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. For when they went up to the valley of Eshkol and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel so that they did not go into the land which the Lord had given them. So the Lord's anger was aroused on that day, and he swore an oath, saying, Surely none of the men who came up from Egypt from twenty years old and above, shall see the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me, except Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite, and Joshua the son of Nun, for they have wholly followed the Lord. So the Lord's anger was aroused against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness forty years, until all the generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord was gone. And look, you, have risen in your father's place a brood of sinful men to increase still more the fierce anger of the Lord against Israel. For if you turn away from following him, he will once again leave them in the wilderness, and you will destroy all people. Then they came near to him and said, We will build sheepfolds here for our livestock and cities for our little ones, but we ourselves will be armed, ready to go before the children of Israel until we have brought them to their place. And our little ones will dwell in the fortified cities because of the inhabitants of the land. We will not return to our homes until every one of the children of Israel has received his inheritance. For we will not inherit with them on the other side of the Jordan and beyond, because our inheritance has fallen to us on this eastern side of the Jordan. If you do this thing, if you arm yourselves before the Lord for the war, and all your armed men cross over the Jordan before the Lord until he has driven out his enemies from before him, and the land is subdued before the Lord. Then, afterward, you may return and be blameless before the Lord and before Israel. And this land shall be your possession before the Lord. But if you do not do so, then take note. You have sinned against the Lord, and be sure, your sin will find you out. Build cities for your little ones, and folds for your sheep, and do what has proceeded out of your mouth. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben spoke to Moses. Your servants will do as my Lord commands. Our little ones, our wives, our flocks, and all our livestock will be there in the cities of Gilead. But your servants 
cross over, every man armed for war, before the Lord to battle, just as my Lord says. So Moses gave command concerning them to Eleazar the priest, to Joshua the son of Nun, and to the chief fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel. And Moses said to them, If the children of Gad and the children of Reuben cross over the Jordan with you, every man armed for battle before the Lord, and the land is subdued before you, then you shall give them the land of Gilead as a possession. But if they do not cross over armed with you, they shall have possessions among you in the land of Canaan. Then the children of Gad and the children of Reuben answered, As the Lord has said to your servants, so we will do. We will cross over armed before the Lord into the land of Canaan. But the possession of our inheritance shall remain with us on this side of the Jordan. So Moses gave to the children of Gad, to the children of Reuben, and to half the tribe of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, the kingdom of Sihon, king of the Amorites, and the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, the land with its cities within the borders, the cities of the surrounding country. And the children of Gad built Dibon, and Ataroth, and Aroah, Atrath, and Shophan, and Jazer, and Jagbehar, Beth Nimra, and Beth Haran fortified cities, and folds for sheep. And the children of Reuben built Heshbon, and Eliela, and Kirjathain, Nebo, and baal Meon, the names being changed, and Shibma. And they gave other names to the cities which they built. And the children of Machir, the son of Manasseh, went to Gilead and took it, and dispossessed the Amorites who were in it. So Moses gave Gilead to Machir, the son of Manasseh, and he dwelt in it. Also Jair, the son of Manasseh, went and took its small towns and called them Havath Jair. Then Noba went and took Kenath and its villages, and he called it Noba after his own name. 